The Roman Forum and the Tower of the Winds The rows of columns framing this rectangular former piazza were built by the Romans. They conquered Greece around 150 B.C. and stayed for centuries. This square, sometimes called the Roman Agora, was the commercial center, or forum, of Roman Athens. The columns supported a covered porch, providing shade for shoppers browsing the many stores fronting the square. Picture this place filled with Roman bureaucrats and Greek locals. The forum, or open-air piazza, was a feature found in every city Rome conquered. Many a Greek slave was more cultured than his Roman master, reduced to the role of warning his boss not to wear a plaid toga with polka dot sandals. Now, take a few steps to the right for a closer look at the octagonal domed Tower of the Winds. Built in the first century B.C., this building was an ingenious combination of clock, weather station, and guide to the planets. Much later, under Ottoman rule, dervishes used the tower as a place for their whirling worship and prayer. Look close at the tower's carved reliefs. They depict the traditional eight winds of the world as winged humans. They fly in, bringing the weather. Look to the left of the square. There you'll see the ruins of the Library of Hadrian. Four lone columns sit atop apse-like foundations. This was once a cultural center with a library, lecture halls, garden, and art gallery. It was built in the 2nd century A.D. by the Greek-loving Roman emperor. Most likely it was frequented by sophisticated Greeks, while their Roman overlords crowded the nearby tavernas for the wet toga contests. Wet toga contests? Yeah, the winner got a statue of Hadrian with sunglasses and worry beads. Oh, brother. Agora Square is the touristy epicenter of the Plaka. You have your choice of restaurants where you can dine with Brits on holiday or have a beer with a group of Aussies. Agora Square is also near internet cafes, souvenir shopping, and it's a stop for one of the city's tourist trains. The Plaka can be both atmospheric and crassly touristic. Its streets are lined with souvenirs, tacky tavernas, a smattering of small museums, ancient ruins, and exhausted tourists. Monastiraki Square. We've made it from Syntagma Square, the center of modern Athens, to the city's other main square, Monastiraki, the gateway to the touristy old town. You'll hear the name Monastiraki a lot. It refers to the square, the flea market action nearby, and the surrounding neighborhood. The Church of the Virgin was built in the 12th century, in the Byzantine style, as part of a big monastery. When the monastery was torn down, this was all that remained, and it gave the area its name, Little Monastery, or Monastiraki. The church is mostly restored, with a much more modern bell tower. The restaurant on the corner, Bayraktaris, is best known. Inside, the walls are lined with photos of famous politicians and artists who've come right here for their souvlaki. Two other joints just next door, Thanasis and Savas have a better reputation. Just past that is a building with a balcony. This was a former mosque. Look over the wooden door to see its original Arabic inscription. Known as Tsami from the Turkish word for mosque, this was a place of worship from the 15th till the 19th centuries. Today, it's a branch of the Museum of Greek Folk Art.
This walk has taken us through 2,500 years of Athens history, though in reverse order. We started in modern Athens at Syntagma Square and Ermu Street. Next, we saw medieval Athens, Orthodox churches, and the winding streets of the Plaka. Finally, we've seen ancient ruins, both Greek and Roman. Now that you know the story of this great city, step back outside into 21st century Athens. Explore and enjoy this global capital, the springboard for so much of Western civilization and the place that more than one in three Greeks call home. Thanks for joining me on this Athens City Walk. 